that going. There we go. So we are recording this meeting and it'll be posted on the website following this meeting. Um, so you'll be able to look back and share it with other people who weren't able to attend the meeting. Um, the other thing to know is that you can leave and rejoin the meeting at any time unless you get kicked out. I've yet to have to kick anybody out. So um, let's hope tonight is not the first night that that happens. Um, and again, the meeting materials were, will be recorded and available at this website that you can see on here, which is a2gov.org forward slash Earhart 2023. Um, for those of you who joined um, just a few minutes ago, uh, you didn't hear my um, spiel about the demographic survey. The demographic survey is up and running. This is completely optional. We do ask that you take it though, because we like to know who we're reaching so we can determine who we're not reaching. And so we can start thinking of strategies to reach out to people to get a broader perspective. So if you don't mind taking that, we really hope you do. Um, all right, Cynthia, if you don't mind moving to the next slide. Um, we do like to have civil meetings. So we do have some meeting norms that we put out there. And this is really just about let's be nice to each other. Um, the first um, norm that we have is to commit to learning and avoid speculation. So we really do want you to ask questions through this so that you can learn um, what we're up to and we can share. And we also like to hear from you. Um, so if you have thoughts and questions, please bring those forward. Um, and then we also just ask that you remember the dignity of other people. So critique ideas, not people and be thoughtful about your language. We want this to be a welcoming, comfortable place for everybody to discuss what's going on in our community. So please think about the language that you're using. All right, next slide. The demographic poll, as I mentioned before, we have that up and running and I'll leave that up for about a minute more. Um, again, it's completely optional, but we do hope you take it. And let's see, what's the next one? And then the technology overview. So many of us have been using Zoom for two years now, but um, I don't know, we still seem to botch it. So I like to go over technology overview. Um, you can raise your hand. So uh, we do ask that you do that. We are using a webinar format. And the reason for that is because we like to safeguard ourselves against Zoom bombers and it's easier for them to Zoom bomb us when we have a meeting. But in the webinar format, it means that we can't see you and you can't share your screen. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't wanna hear from you. So the way that you can uh, indicate that you have something to say is to virtually raise your hand, which is shown at the bottom of the screen, just click that button. Or you could submit something in writing through the Q&A feature at the bottom. And I'll keep track of that and I'll read out your question for the team to answer. If you are on the phone or if you get, um, knocked off and have to rejoin by phone, um, sometimes that happens, you press star nine to raise your hand. So again, I'll keep track of it and look for people's hands and look for questions coming in. All right, and then this is our agenda. Um, we just had our overview, we'll go over the corridor history, our meeting objectives, project overview, and then get to Q&A. Again, though, if you have questions that just strike you throughout the meeting, you're welcome to submit those or raise your hand. And then we'll finally get to next steps. And then I think with this next slide, if I'm not mistaken, I turn it over to Cynthia to go over the project team. And you're on mute, Cynthia. Yep, it was uh, showing me. It's like, whoops. Thanks for that, Heather. Um, as Heather said, I'd love to introduce our team today. Our project manager is Brian Slazuski. And Hello. just yeah. as a note for some of you who may have been to our most recent public engagement, um, we have had a, a, a shift and a shuffle in our project manager. So Brian is now our project manager. My name is Cynthia Redinger, and I am one of the city's transportation engineers. Tonight, we also have Heather Seyfroth with us, and she is with Systems Planning, and she's a transportation planner and also a community engagement um, specialist. And Chris Carson, who is not with us this evening, is our lead design engineer for the project. We really wanted to start out this evening um, just going through the public participation process that has gotten us to the point where we are. 
uh, so that we can make sure that everybody who's involved this evening understands how we got here. This slide, it, it's a busy slide, um, and I will go through it really briefly. Starting in 2013, that was when our city's non-motorized plan was updated. And at that point in time, the concept of installing bike lanes on Earhart was part of that plan and it, a result of that public engagement process. And 2018, we did, we city staff did a technical review of the lane configuration that is on the corridor and um, checked to see whether we were able to support those non-motorized plan recommendations. Staff found that they were uh, supported and we did start, um, and, and we looked into that and the project did not proceed at that point in time. So in 2019, that's when the city kicked off the most recent transportation plan process, and, which involved a lot of engagement. So you've got several, several engagements on this timeline that are part of that process. And that was a comprehensive transportation plan process. So we, um, we you know, we had a touch point in February and April of 2019. In November of 2019, that was when the the fact book came out and then the plan was finally adopted in 2020 and it was adopted unanimously by council in 2021 we i'm sorry i have things a little a little off base on there but anyways in 2021 we started working on this project again so after uh, the A20 plan, I'm sorry, I apologize for everyone. The A20 plan was adopted by council unanimously in 2020, and then the transportation plan was adopted in 2021. Both of those were adopted unanimously. Um, both of those supporting uh, the encouragement of non-motorized means of transportation. And most importantly, the transportation plan is with its focus on safety and improving safety throughout all aspects of our design and operations. So then in 2021, in December, we kicked off public engagement for this particular process. Also in 2021, there was an engagement for um, the southern half of Earhart. So Earhart from Gettys up to Green Hills Drive that had previously been two, they had previously been proposed as two separate projects, one going to construction this year and one following with construction next year. Just because of the way things have worked out, it has been determined that we are going to put both sections of Earhart to construction next year. And Brian will go over that a little bit more later. Now, now today, um, we are here to present you with a design solution that we have come up with based on all of that wonderful public input that we received as part of that December 2023 engagement process. Um, a little bit about the results of that process. We had over 250 public comments that were received as part of that process. So we had a really great amount of participation in that that effort. Some of the, the hot topics that we heard when we came to the community and asked, you know, what, what are you experiencing on this corridor? Where are the gaps? What are your, what are your concerns and what are your needs? We heard a lot about motorist speeds on the corridor and that speeds were too high and there was a desire for the design to bring motor speeds down. We heard a lot about incomplete sidewalks and the ability to have good permeability for walkers through this um, through the corridor. We also heard a lot about the crosswalks and the crosswalks that are at the intersections as well as not at the intersections and the need for those to be enhanced and that folks didn't feel comfortable using the crosswalks as they're currently set up. We also heard a lot about the desire to have better bicycle facilities. So we heard a lot on, the, you know, the fact that there are, are not 
dedicated bicycle lanes out here. We also heard a lot of comments about the street design and the intersection design. And those ranged, um, those ranged a little bit. The, the comprehensive list of comments are available on the website. But really it focused on the fact that the design doesn't really meet our design standards that we're using in other places, that the intersections are very wide, that they're very confusing, and also that the street itself is a little bit confusing. So that's what we heard. And we were able to take that information and develop a design based on those community concerns, as well as the values that are established in our A2 Zero plan, which is our sustainability plan and the city's vision zero transportation plan. So this evening, what we would like to what we would like to accomplish this evening. So our meeting objectives are to describe the proposed changes based on feedback and technical feasibility. So that's going through the plan. We want to show you those additional pedestrian, the additional pedestrian access we were able to develop. Um, the dedicated bicycle lanes we were able to develop and this design that's going to be able to reduce crash potential and also reduce crash severity out there. Uh, and also we want to just share that project design with you and answer your questions and make sure that you understand what our goals are with the project. And we'd also like to be able to discuss what that construction schedule is going to look like with you. So with that, I am going to hand over to Brian for the project layout. And I'm going to stop sharing so that Brian can share the layout with you. Thank you, Thank you Cynthia. And if I am, on top of the technology, hopefully I can share the overview screen. And while we're, well, you got it up pretty quickly, but we do have a question that came in um, before you jump into that. And that is reduced crash potential. Is that reduced speed? It's definitely a component. So when we are proposing intersection designs that are uh, more standard. So right now the intersections are, are, they're confusing, especially for people who are making left turns. They are not, they don't really meet standard designs. So folks don't necessarily know exactly how they're supposed to go through that intersection. And it usually plays out in, in the left turns, right? So like the left turns at Glacier Way and and Earhart are, are really typical of that when you have um, you have that very wide center that's in in the median and space is not delineated. So folks are trying to make a left turn where they're they're an uncontrolled left turn for northbound, and at the same time you have folks from Glacier Way. You know we've observed folks who are coming into the intersection and trying to make a two stage left turn and everyone's trying to occupy that same space in the middle at the same time. So that, that creates conflict and confusion. So the design that we've put forward um, is a simplified intersection design. And it's um, also reducing speeds, um, gives better reaction times, and it would reduce severity of any crashes that did occur. Thanks, Thank Cynthia. You. So what I'm going to do is uh, we've got an aerial map because, you know, just a segment of the aerial map up right now of uh, Earhart Road. Um, and at the far left, you see that's the Gettys uh, roundabout. So that's the far south end of our project. And as Cynthia touched on briefly, and some of you may know or may not know, originally there were two separate projects here. There was kind of a resurfacing project on the south part of Gettys Road, say south of Green Hills. And then we had the improvements that were being proposed, you know, from Green Hills north up to US 23. And US 23 is the is the city limit there, um, right at the bridge where you transition 
over to county jurisdiction and, and the township. So our project will now cover both of those, the south half and the north half, um, the entire length of Earhart Road that's within the city limits. Um, and uh, just a question, uh, Heather or Cynthia, if you can confirm, if I move this, do you see it moving also? Okay, yes, so it's, 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 it's live then. Okay, I'm going to focus in maybe a little bit more. It's a large drawing, uh, but maybe more helpful um, for you to see things this way. Um, the project starts just north of the uh, the roundabout at Gettys Road, kind of adjacent to the big red barn at Concordia. Um, and what we are proposing from that point north is not really a huge change immediately. Um, the road is fairly wide there, and there are kind of bike bike, uh, bike lanes on both sides. I think they're kind of narrow. I think what we're doing is widening this out a little bit to provide full 10-foot lanes, one lane in each direction, and, and the six-foot bicycle lanes. Um, so on this drawing, the blue shading, if you will, is the new pavement on uh, Earhart Road. Um, the purple lines are there. They're just they're the property lines. So I'll, I'll, I'll mention those in, the, in a few in a few points. Um, nothing huge there. Um, there's also you'll see crosswalks. Well, this is actually an existing crosswalk. But since we do have bicycle lanes on both sides, the crosswalks will be enhanced with some of the green marking also to indicate bicycle crossing so the bikes can use that and change directions. Also in this section of Earhart Road, you'll notice a lot of little green dots. Um, that's just additional tree plantings uh, along the road. So moving north um, from that through the Concordia property approaching uh, Pine Bray. Uh, again, you'll see a, a crosswalk being provided there. Um, you know, again, with the bicycle markings on that. Um, bike lanes in both directions traveling north. And I'm trying to think if my memory serves me correct. It's the section between the two pine brains, I think, is where it really narrows down the existing road. And if that's the case, the road is being widened there. Again, providing that same cross section we had on the south, 10 foot travel lanes, six foot bicycle lanes, one on each side going in each, you know, one going north, one going south. And um, Brian, oh, yes. sorry to interrupt, um, but while we're um, still close to the Concordia section, I, question came in that yep. um, reads, can Concordia be asked to create an underground or over the road crosswalk? Um, over the road crosswalks, we, we don't do. We've, I, I think Cynthia probably has some data on that. What we find is they don't work. They're not used. They're extremely expensive and they get torn down once they start getting in need of repair. And by and what you're referring to is a bridge, right? A bridge, yeah, yeah. just a, a pedestrian separate bridge that you have to climb up to cross and go down. There are certain places like on campus near the um, central campus rec building in the dorms where there is a pedestrian bridge, but that's really on grade for them on both sides. So that's used a lot. But if you create a bridge that Pedestrians need to climb up, cross, and climb down. They are reluctant to use it as at best. Um, I, I think an underground is probably not really practical. That's that would be an engineering, quite an engineering undertaking there. Um, so I, I don't know that they're they're interested in pursuing something like that. And then we have another, a couple it, it, more questions. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, go ahead, Heather. Ed, just please interrupt with questions. Um, I don't want to just- Yeah, sure, you know, if you don't mind me doing it this no, way. So since it we're way. on um, segments, you know, to, I'll jump in with a few better. questions and then we can move on. Um, but going back, there was actually an earlier comment going back to the conversation about speed. And the comment is, is that's not where the speed is at turns. Um, 
it is from Gettys to 23, a complete racetrack. Um, but going back to this area where we're at, can a, there is a question of, can a mini roundabout be contemplated at Pine Bray for speed reduction purposes? Not as part of this project. Um, this project is predominantly a resurfacing project and as such, uh, our scope is limited. That is a comment that we can um, make note of and consider you know, for the future. As you can see with the purple lines, we, we don't have a lot of right away here as far as like widening out that, being able to widen out that intersection for a roundabout. And then we have a comment, not a, not a question, but really glad to see that you're widening over the crest of the hill. That's one of the worst areas for cyclists. And then a question, does the sidewalk gap remain on the east side of Earhart, north of Pine Bray? Um, yes, it does. It's, it's not proposed to have new sidewalks um, on the east side there. Brian, if you don't mind me adding a little bit of clarification to that, it's between the pine brace. Yes, between pine brace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll see some. There are going to be some side sidewalks um, included, but not not in this section. And then a couple more questions just came in. Will the crossings be equipped with the yellow flashing lights to tell cars to slow down? We have not completed the design at this point, um, but the design for, for that two lane section, it's meeting our current design guidelines, but as we're for crosswalks, but as we are finalizing our design for this corridor, we will also be looking at the latest research that has come out of FHWA. We will be making that determination. So that's not finalized yet. And FHWA stands for Federal Highway. Yeah, the Federal Highway Administration. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, no problem. Um, and then a comment, um, high speeds down and up the hill to Pine Bray makes me scared to use the official bike lanes. As a result, I will continue to use the sidewalk. Um, is there still an area near the cemetery for visitors parking? What I'm not clear on the area for visitors parking because there's I think this is the cemetery right there. If the person that asked that question, if they want to clarify that a little bit more. In the meantime, um, we do have a comment that reads Concordia crosswalk should have light indicators. Um, on, on the west side, is that the, that's as far as this aerial goes up, is, is that the St. Paul School? On, on the left, so that's what. So it goes up to the school on the west side, and then there's the cemetery entrance on the south side. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not certain what the parking area is. Um, yeah, somebody wrote, I believe people just parallel park on the side of the road at the cemetery. And then the next one is there's always been an area to pull off to the side, off to the road for visitation near the cemetery. And then uh, another comment, cars zoom down the hill to Gettys making the bike lanes that share the same road surface dangerous. And, um, and then a question, how will the grade change in front of the cemetery? On, on the road, it's, I mean, longitudinally on the road, it's not really changing. So the, any grading would be extending the road. Cause again, I think this is where the road is quite narrow. Um, extending it out so that we can get the bike lanes in. So I think it's just grading within the right of way there. We'd have to look at the question about the uh, the parking. So you can. And then we have somebody. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Brian. Go ahead. 
we have somebody with their hand raised and you are welcome to speak, Ingrid. And then and then I think after this, we'll move on for a little bit more and um, allow Brian to explain some more things and then I'll come back to some more questions. All right, but I'm uh, associated with the board for Botsford Cemetery. And as it is to pull off the side of the road, you know, there's a tremendous grade change or kind of parking at an angle as it is. So when, and I apologize for not remembering all of my road jargon. Um, so if you're going to create, how how much width is there right now? Can you, uh, in the existing pavements, is there the 10 foot lanes and the six foot shoulder no, bike I think, lanes? I, I'm sorry for interrupting Ingrid. I think the existing road might, might be like 24 feet wide there. So if we're talking about 10 foot, what, 10 foot plus six, we're talking about 32 feet wide versus right. 24 feet wide. So, so you're just going to maintain the 24 foot, foot road width at that no. point? No, this this is what this is widening out to 32 feet to provide the bicycle lanes and the trail. So, lanes. are you going to get that ex extra eight feet on four feet on the uh, on concrete, both sides? On both sides. Yeah, the center line's not changing. The, the center line of the road's not changing. So, it just so if you're going to take an extra four feet from the cemetery, you are really have some pretty severe uh, grades. You are creating pretty severe grades unless you're going to raise the road at that point. So noted. So take a closer look at that. You haven't already? Um, I, I do not know it because it hasn't been, the design has not been finalized on that. Okay. So that, I mean, that will be a concern yeah. of of the cemetery. Right. And and just to explain, we're, we're not sharing with you a final, you know, engineering design plan. This this is based on what we've heard and what we've laid out um, where we're moving towards in the design. Um, but there's not final engineering plans. It's not ready to go out to bid or anything like that. We're pretty early in the design process right now. Okay, considering that I think of myself as representing the property, <laughs> uh, will we, I, we slash I, uh, be informed of all of the design as it proceeds so that we can plan accordingly? We, we, we certainly could make sure to do that, Ingrid, if we have your contact information. Yes, you yeah. do. Very good. Excellent point. And then I'll just read off a couple of comments based on this discussion. And then, Brian, you can move on. Um, the, the one comment that's is, a, thank no, you. that's okay. No, no. <laughs> um, the one comment is, thank you for adding the six foot bike lanes. I think that should be a nice improvement as there are no bike lanes on Earhart at this point, should work out fine. Um, and then on the cemetery itself, I agree, people will not be able to visit loved ones. Um, the next comment is, this seems ill-planned if the cemetery was not considered. And then the last comment on that is, I appreciate Ingrid's additions here. Thank you. I think we touched on you know, Pine, Pine Bray having uh, crossing for bicycles. And this would also have... Um, don't believe there's street lighting out there right now at that crossing um, that would be added. Um, moving north um, on the east side. So again, there's no sidewalk proposed adjacent to the Pine Bray condominium property, if you will. Um, on the east side, picking up at this point, the new large development on the east side does have sidewalk installed um, so that extends along the length of their property and also I don't don't have it shown on here I'm pretty certain they have a crossing though that's going in there Cynthia do you know that yes I yeah. can I can give you two additions at this point uh, there 
they are required by their development agreement to connect the sidewalk along their frontage to Pine Bray. So they will be connecting down to the to the adjacent neighborhood, and then a, next it connects, to it connects there, to here. no, it goes all the way down to Pine Bray. All the way to the road? Yes, it will. Yes, they are required to fill that gap as well, so that we will have a continue, you know, okay. a connected system. Okay. They will also be providing a crossing um, that is located adjacent to their driveway, which is a little bit north of Longwood. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, more than that. No, it's more than that. Is it further north than this? Because I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's towards the north end of the. Of the north north end of their property? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then the city will pick up. Um, that that the dark or the bold white line is new sidewalk um, connecting, continuing the connection on the east side up to uh, the first Green Hills intersection. And this is the point where the road really starts to get pretty wide. And so what we're able to accommodate is a um, a roundabout there, the the, the red rose colored donut. Um, would be a roundabout so that traffic moving through there does need to, you know, make, make the maneuver through the roundabout um, to continue in either direction. Also providing crosswalks um, in all, all, all three legs around that for bicycles and pedestrians. And what we are doing here, since the, it is so wide, we're able to accommodate the roundabout primarily with, you know, a lot of paint markings. Um, and vertical elements to control the uh, car movements. And we're not really proposing on touching the, the existing medium. I know I had some questions about, are we gonna be taking out trees or uh, you know the grass on the medians? No, for the most part, the, the medians you can see aren't, aren't being touched. And um, um, Brian, before we move on, we've got yep. some questions going back to the Pine Bray area and some now yep. on this intersection. Um, one yep. is an observation that cautious cyclists wary of going up and over the hill by the cemetery and its blind spots sometimes use Pine Bray as a safer bypass. Um, the next is a question, will the new streetlights have a full cutoff fixtures, have full cutoff fixtures? So they will be, they will meet our, our current standards, which are, you know, limit the back cast and are, are designed to really illuminate the street. Thank you. And the next question is, does the center turn lane disappear at Walden Wood? Yes. The, we were, we went through and we looked at the turn lanes and we did uh, an analysis based on, on volumes, including the proposed volumes from the new development. And what, what we found was that um, we were able to repurpose that portion of the street to include the bike lanes in this area without needing to widen the road. Okay. And the next question is Concord Pines just installed their sidewalk and it doesn't go off their property to Pine Bray. Are they coming back to extend right. it? Right. That's, that's what I thought. That's, so I'd have to look into that um, some more. I thought it was just going to their um, property line. But Cynthia, if you know more about the development mm -hmm. agreement, then yes. they would have to come I... back and construct it through, the, through there. But yeah, yeah it is right there. It's built. If right it there. ends, yeah, if it ends right there, that's great yes. information. I'll be in contact with the private development team tomorrow because I specifically made it a requirement that they connect to the existing network. Connect all the way to Pine Bray Drive. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You would get no all argument right. from me on that. But okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll find out more about that and send that information out. Um, is there going to be an island in the middle of the roundabout? 
Um, yes, it would be a mountable. It would have to be a mountable island. So, you know, larger vehicles can make the maneuvers and roll over it if they need to. Uh, and to provide a little clarification on that for in assistance with Brian, it'll still be concrete, it'll still be raised, but it would not have a, a barrier curb. So because yeah. it is a small intersection right. yeah. to accommodate larger vehicles like fire truck, it would be, you know, the design would be similar to the one, you know, to the profile of the island itself would be similar to the one that we have installed on Broadway. So that that is approved by our fire department. And then we have a comment. Thank goodness for roundabouts. This will slow drivers down a lot. Um, and then a question, what kind of light pollution will the roundabout cause? I do not believe a roundabout is needed at the Green Hills. Ann Arbor has gone roundabout crazy. So the intersections will continue to have positive contrast lighting for the crosswalks. And though that is the lighting that we're focusing on for these intersections. Um, and then a comment, the Concord sidewalk is the sidewalk to nowhere in both directions at the moment. And that's it for questions and comments. Oh, there's another question that just came in. Which end of Green Hills Drive will the roundabout be? Both. This is the this is the south one right here we're looking at, but it's going to be at both of them. Yeah, I guess that is the cue. Maybe we can move on and just you can slide throw the other one. Yeah. So um, again, talking about the, uh, the, the the Concord development side sidewalk that doesn't connect to anything right now. We so we'll pick up on the north side of their sidewalk connection and continue that past Green Hills. Um, and continuing north from that. Um, the next item element I want to talk on is the um, intersection. It's Ridgemar Square on the west side, and on the east side, is, uh, it's another uh, entrance to um, condominiums. Right now, this is what something Cynthia had alluded to earlier. It's it's a very wide open, un uncontrolled. Uh, median opening right now. Um, on the north side, you can kind of see it follows the gray line around here. On the south side, it actually goes into where it's shown as green here. So, you know, between there, those two is a just a pretty wide open area. And it was interesting for me seeing this. I, I've, I've driven on Earhart many times and looking at that reminds me of what the old MDOT type roads used to be in the meet they had the medians they were just kind of wide open and cars kind of went in every direction they felt like MDOT obviously in the last several decades is changing those and controlling those movements and tightening those up to more get the vehicles more focused and that's essentially what the city is proposing on on this one also to tighten this up and it would allow for vehicles to turn um, left into either one of the developments. It would also provide for pedestrian crossing, vehicles coming out of the developments off of Ridgemar or uh, from the east side would be turning right to exit though. So turning right from Ridgemar then to go north would be through, through the roundabout. Um, to go to the north. Um, and the same with the development on the east side, it would go to Green Hills, the other North Green Hills entrance um, to, to that roundabout. And um, so Brian, there's a lot to, lot to digest on, on this one right here. Brian, there's some uh, questions that came in. I'll get back to some earlier ones, but we have some ones that um, you should probably answer immediately. And yep. those are, what are the yellow lines showing us and what are the white Chevron lines? Um, those are all pavement markings for the, uh, for, for the new road. It's all, it's all pavement markings. So the pavement here is extremely wide 
and what we're doing is really controlling it with with controlling the pay, uh, traffic with the pavement markings. Was there another? Yeah, actually, we do have a, a few more questions. If yeah. we don't mind pausing for that, um, no, one no, comment: um, roundabouts are awesome. So that's a comment. Um, the next is a question. Will there be bollards at the entrances to roundabout so that southbound drivers can't just drive over the paint and zoom straight through? Yes, as Brian uh, said earlier, we'll also be looking at vertical elements and we're calling them vertical elements right now because we haven't finalized the design and we haven't finished selecting which types of of elements that could be so that could be um you know of a, a, a bollard style element that could also be something that's it's called a, a quick curb section that that is kind of like a temporary um recycled rubber curb line that we used on barton when we were piloting Barton at Pontiac Trail when we were piloting that bump out there as well. So we have a couple of different options that we have worked with, but we have not finalized selection yet. Thanks. All right, the next question is, so, they'll, so there will be sidewalks in front of Earhart Village condominiums? Um, yes. If they, these are the Earhart Village condominiums on the east side, the city will be installing sidewalks. Um, from Green Hills to Green Hills. And uh, the next question after that is, will the protective berm for the Green Hills condos be impacted by the installation of the sidewalk in our area? Yes. That, 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 this is where, and again, that's why I have the uh, purple um, lines drawn. Right now, that sidewalk is shown right up against the property line, kind of where a typical sidewalk is usually located. Um, a couple of options out here. One is it could be slid, since there's a fair amount of opening, closer to the road um, and have less impact on the, on the berm. Um, but because I, I'm thinking of the way that berm is coming down there, there would be some impact into it, at least certainly in the in the right of way um, and possibly a grading permit. But that again, that's a, a detailed design that needs to be uh, evaluated. All right, thank you. And the next uh, question is very pleased to finally see the road diet reducing two lanes each way to one lane north and south south entrance to Green Hills Drive. Thank you. This will lead to all sorts of improvements in safety. Will the wide space between the car lane and the bike lane marked with the Chevron paint stripes have any physical features, plastic bollards, curbs, et cetera, preventing cars from drifting into this buffer area between car and bike lanes? Or are you confident that cars will stay in their lane? We anticipate that the buffer will have some vertical elements in it as well. And the Density may change along the corridor, right? So we could have uh, more as we're approaching an intersection to give a little bit tighter control and then maybe have it spaced out a little bit. But the anticipation of staff is that we're, we will be putting vertical elements in throughout the corridor to support this design. And then the next comment is, I agree we do not need more roundabout on Earhart Road. And the next comment or question is, no, you are proposing a Michigan left for people who live in the condos. Why not just create clear markings for cars to turn in and out? We are proposing this design because it is a, a safer design. There are fewer conflict points and it controls the movements better. All right, the next um, comment is what you propose at Ridgemore is excellent. However, however, please look at the median near Ridgemore. The trees and shrubs block one from seeing the far lane to Earhart mm -hmm. in Earhart when you look to the right and are trying to turn left onto Earhart. This is very dangerous. 
And then the next one is I respect the viewpoint around too many roundabouts, but I do think that they will slow traffic around the Green Hills Drive entrances. Many drivers do not respect the current crosswalks. And now that students walkers only have to deal with one with single lane crossings, I think that will greatly contribute to slowing traffic and making things safer. And then the next is a question. So you say uh, they will not drive in the white area? They will not be permitted to drive in the white area. And then the follow-up question is, why not just make the pavement more narrow instead of using pavement markings? I think one of the primary reasons um, for that is you get into an entire, the, the cost goes way up. It's probably the main consideration in doing something like that. Um, changing the curb lines changes the drainage and you end up constructing a lot more infrastructure to do that um, than just paving it and uh, using lane markings. So I think cost is a huge consideration for that. And similarly, there was another comment or question, was there any consideration of narrowing the pavement itself, especially if there are areas where sidewalk installation could otherwise be difficult or expensive? And then we have a comment, the vertical elements on the Gettys Road roundabouts near US 23 seem to work well to prevent cars from driving through the middle of the roundabout. And then um, a comment, love the roundabout. The green dog bone and the other dividers that force a narrowing structure seem overkill. We must force left-hand turns from Ridgemar and Earhart Village condos on the other side below to drive more to get out to the streets. Must we force left-hand turns from Ridgemar? That's the question. Um, and I think you more or less answered the Cynthia, but if you wanted to add anything more to it. Um, I guess if anybody needs a, some sort of clarification, they could ask questions on that. I'd also like to point out that this design decision is consistent with the design direction that um, we have chosen for the, the Nixon corridor. So the, these utilizing um, roundabout intersections for, for close left turns to eliminate conflict points is, is something that we've been looking at for a little while now. Okay. And the, just a comment on that again. Um, agree, I do not like this proposed all of a Michigan left either. Um, will, will someone turning left out of Ridgemar run into cars turning right into Ridgemar? Mm -hmm. Would someone turning left into Ridgemar? Out of Ridgemar, someone run turning... into cars turning right into Ridgemar. So if cars turning right into Ridgemar and then a car is turning, I mean, coming out of Ridgemar, you'd be turning right. The only direction you're gonna be going is right. So there would be no conflict. Right. What about lighting from Pine Bray to Green Hills Drive? Very dark for cyclists. So at, oh. Go ahead. at this point in time, we're focusing on the Intersections, we are not proposing um, corridor lighting. All right. How does one come out of Earhart Village driveway and turn left onto Earhart in the current view? Do you have to drive north to the next intersection? I wish this was a roundabout, by the way. Um, so yes, the, the answer is the way it's configured on this drawing. If you are coming out and turn right, you would turn around at the Green Hills roundabout to head back south. All right, and then just a comment, I lived on Earhart for over 10 years and the need for sidewalks along EVHA is not necessary too much concern being put in. 
Um, so to turn out of Ridgemar to go north, you have to turn right, south, and go through the roundabout to head north? Yes. Okay. Between the Toll Brother development and now the removal impact of the protective berm and sidewalks is really quite devastating to our homes in Green Hills. I certainly hope there is more to be said about this project. Um, the next is, I'm assuming that the markings and the vertical elements will prevent the bikes from wandering into the marked area also. Yeah, they will be provided with their own lane. And then here's a concern about um, existing traffic backups for Green Hills school drop off um, will be increased by roundabouts at both ends. So thoughts on that? I, yeah, um, I do. We've city staff uh, routinely work with schools when they ask us to to come out and um, and look at travel patterns with them. And last year, Green Hills asked um, staff to come out. So our, our regular contingent of engineering and enforcement folks went out and looked, looked at operations with them. And one of the things that they had pointed, pointed out was they have um, a lot of delay from left turns. And, and that does cause their flow through the area to get um, uh, a little bit backed up. So they've actually adjusted operations on their site to um, direct parents how, how to be exiting in, in with left turns and where, where left turns are, are causing problems. So given that scenario that left turns can be so difficult to make from either of the Green Hills driveways onto Earhart, at this point in time, I think that it will be a relief for parents traveling associated with Green Hills School um, from the east side, and also um, with parents who are, are traveling by driving um, from the uh, um, Martin Luther King Elementary. I, I believe they have a very similar schedule as far as the end of the day goes. I think they do get some conflict with that. So I think it'll it'll help both of those schools with their operations. All right, thank you. And then some comments, no more lighting, please. Um, no conflict for left turns because it's completely inconsiderate for those doing that drive every day. It's creating more unnecessary congestion and the roundabouts. Um, agree no sidewalks on the Green, Hill, Green Hills condo side is needed. Um, and then somebody wrote, I meant too much concrete on the side of the EVHA side. So I might have read that wrong. Sorry about that. Um, why not just a roundabout between Ridgemar and the opposite street? Uh, I think uh, something that you'll notice is that where we have proposed roundabouts is where we, we can fit them within the existing intersection footprint. And that's that's one consideration. And then there's also the consideration about the operations of the intersection and, um, and whether that makes makes sense given flows from, from all different directions. So it's, it's really close to the other intersections as well. Um, so all of those things taken together uh, are not supporting a, a roundabout at this location. All right, thank you. If the sidewalks impact the protective berms, will you shore them up with the retainer walls? Yes. Yeah, that's, um, I'm thinking along um, Nixon Road. Um, I had a project several years ago where we, we were installing sidewalk next to a kind of a landscape berm area for one of the condominium developments. And so the sidewalk essentially cut into that berm and a retaining wall went behind it to minimize that impact. All right. Um, and then somebody wrote, actually, it may be the other way around. Cars exiting Green Hill sit at the corner forever. Uh, very happy with the roundabouts and, and single lane traffic. 
is there a way to physically separate the bike lane from vehicle traffic? Barriers, curb, flex post. Can drivers in a hurry, drive, car drivers in a hurry will not respect the white lanes painted on the roadway, especially in winter? I, yes, and um, as, as we said a couple of times, um, we haven't decided what that vertical element is yet. So vertical elements will be part of the design. We just haven't got to that point where we're making those design decisions yet. Thank you. If installing trees on condo side involves removing trees, will the city replace those? They provide much of our privacy. Yes, if, if trees needed to be removed, they would be replaced, absolutely. And then here's a question. Is it much more expensive to put in a roundabout instead of a dog bone? I'm just picturing people turning left out of Bridgemar and Green Hills driving using the dog bone and wonder why there just uh, can't be roundabouts. And you, um, I believe you more or less answered this, but if you have anything to add to that. I, no, I don't. And this is a, I guess, just to point back to something Brian said earlier, that this is not the final design. This is conceptual at this point. So, um, you know, like we may be, you know, those lanes may be a little bit narrower and the corners may be a little bit tighter, those sorts of things. I'm gonna question if a roundabout, I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Brian. No, I was just gonna say, so then it, it, it's fair to say that once we do go to the drawing board and put together, engineering plans, we would want to reconvene and go through then that as a, as a design. Mm -hmm. um, if a roundabout were to be located at Earhart and Glacier, wouldn't that make a roundabout at Waldenwood unnecessary? So there's the, the, the Waldenwood and then the, the uh, this thing is, my computer just froze for a minute. There we go. The modified roundabout, the, the egg about more, more likely at, uh, at Glacier Way um, due to the existing uh, cons constraints um, that we have out there. The same concept though, providing for, you know, the circular movement um, around that. Um, so the question was what to eliminate the one at Green Hills? Sorry, let me get back to that. If a roundabout were to be located at Earhart and Glacier, wouldn't that make yeah. a roundabout at Waldenwood unnecessary? No, not this one. The one at Waldenwood, um, Green Hills definitely improves that circulation through there. But Cynthia was just uh, addressing with the school and the backups if the roundabout helps that situation. And isn't yeah, and I, off of that to the yes. north? Yeah. Yes, it is. I, well, to the west. Or to the west, sorry. <laughs> and, yeah. and I love the aerial because it, it shows the left turning vehicles kind of sitting in the, in the middle of all that oh. space there. And it kind yeah. of illustrates the concern that that intersection currently provides. And then a couple comments. I agree, no sidewalk on the east side. I'm 100% opposed to the dog bone proposal. And then a question, when will the design be done? When will road work actually begin? So um, design will be completed this winter um, and then bid for construction starting in the spring. That is the timeline for the project. Thanks. And then a question about the sidewalks. If there's not an appetite for sidewalks on the condo side, does the community have a say in this or is this just going to be done against the general will of the community? Um, I would just, I would say that the input is is received and evaluated and responding responded to accordingly um and i'm always cautious to say that based on some input that this is what the community is looking for 
And whereas we may be getting input from some certain individuals as opposed to the community at large. So we do have to look at that and make what we feel is the best decision for the entire community. And Brian, if you don't mind my adding to that, I would encourage um, anyone who, who does have concerns to go back and look at uh, the summary from our listening session. And um, then you can see where we have, we also have a lot of requests for that sidewalk to be installed. And some comments on the sidewalk. Um, many people in the condominium complex desire sidewalks, especially those with children walking to school and regular walkers. And I am pleased to see the sidewalk gaps filled. Just curious, are all the new sidewalks um, on existing easements? No, I, again, to, to reiterate, the purple lines show um, property lines. So where we are crossing a property line, we may be looking for a, a grading easement or an easement for the sidewalk. So again, a design detail to be worked through. And then another comment about sidewalk. Um, there are two schools on this block, we need sidewalks. Um, and then going back to a uh, question about trees, is there any plan or possibility to add either trees or some type of wall for the purpose of noise containment in the areas where houses are very close to Earhart? Earhart can be very noisy when, for example, large trucks accelerate after a stop sign. Um, I, at this time, I don't know if there's any additional plans for trees than what we have shown, but there are trees included in the project. Um, we can look to see where those are allocated. Usually it's where we are removing trees that we're adding new trees. Okay. And then the yellow shading, is that just uh, paint on the roadway? Yes. Yes, the yellow and the white, excuse me for a second. The yellow and the white are, are both uh, pavement markings on the roadway. Okay. And then uh, the next is a comment. Looking forward to all of these improvements in 2023. Oh, and a question. Is there anything that might prevent this from starting summer of 2023? I hope not. The pavement is way overdue for resurfacing. Um, I mean, it's, it's full speed ahead as far as engineering is concerned to complete a design and put the project out to bid for construction next year. Okay. I mean, if, who knows, if bids came in astronomically high, we might have to reevaluate. We did that on a project last year where bids came in more than double, but I, I can't, I, I can just say that our intent is to proceed and construct next year. All right, and that's it for the written comment and question. Oh no, there's one more that came in. Any plans for sidewalks on Waldenwood from Earhart? Um, I do not know the answer to that. We can take a look into that. Um, I th Waldenwood, there's two Waldenwoods, right? Yes. So Waldenwood South. Because I, I just looked at Waldenwood North, it looks like it had, so it's Waldenwood South that we're talking about that doesn't look like it has sidewalks. I don't know, we could take a look at that. I'm not sure if we've had a request uh, on that gap and where, where it might be in terms of, of, of priority. Just so everybody knows, many of you may know that in terms of sidewalk gaps and those being filled, the old system, if you will, um, the only way to put in new sidewalks was to uh, assess the adjacent property owner. Um, with the new sidewalk millage that the city has, though, we can now put in sidewalks adjacent to properties without special assessing those. So we do have a program that fills sidewalk gaps that pays, that pays for these. 
So somewhere there is somewhere on the list Walden Wood, since it has no sidewalks, is on there as a sidewalk gap. But I can't say we can find out that information and possibly post it. We can say where where that might be in the system or in the requests. All right, we have some more questions coming in about construction. So I think I might pause here with the questions and um, Brian and Cynthia, if you I'm, wanted to go anything over anything more about the design before yeah, we- Yeah, let me just let me just finish it up because we were almost finished. We got up to the uh, roundabout at uh, Glacier. Um, and, and anecdotally, as Cynthia had mentioned this one, you can kind of see it, that one car they're making the left turn into Green Hills. Um, just anecdotally, when, when I drive out here, the, the one thing that I see that is difficult and unusual is the, the left turn mo movements that kind of leave cars in this limbo area um, if there's other traffic in other directions, because there's really no queuing space going into it. You can't queue cars in that median. So you kind of have to wait and find your spot and, and make it through. And a couple of times I've been out there, it's just been some unusual car movements. To, I'll, I'll put it that way. Unusual car movements that have been made for people completing their left turns. Um, I've seen, I've definitely seen that at Glacier Way in Earhart. Um, going north um, from, from there, we're going to, you know, just have to transition back to, so it's, it's maintaining, you know, the bicycle lanes, one lane of traffic um, going to the north. Really, very few, cha no changes on the uh, on, on the pavement, except at Glacier Hills, trying to clean up this uh, very again very wide uh, area again um, with with some pav pavement markings to focus the vehicles going in and out there, and providing a crossing at. Jump, I'm sorry, this is jumping around a little bit. At Kipling also providing um, pedestrian crossing. And just north of that, then we start to narrow down back to we end, end of the blue, end of the new pavement. And it really is transitioning back to, to the bridge um, for the crossing of, of US 23. So that's just a real quick overview, and I'm glad I'm glad we stopped for questions um, along the way. That was that was really helpful to do that. Um, Heather, do you have any more questions? I do. I let's, do. I uh, do. Let, let's do them. All right. Um, I don't mind the egg about, but I worry that some inexperienced northbound drivers might try to make a left egg leisure. So that's a comment about that. And then somebody's wondering if you could talk more about the construction phase. Actually, let's get back to that because I think that'll be kind of closing things out. You know, what's what's next and what you can expect with um, the disruption of construction and the timing of everything. So let me go through the rest of these comments and questions before we return to that. Um, reducing to one lane between south of Green Hills to US 23 will cause a lot of backlog during school time. So that's a comment. Um, Waldenwood South um, has no sidewalks. Yeah. So going back to that conversation yeah, about Waldenwood. Yeah. Um, let's see. Can you please remind residents that there is a way to sign up for updates via Gov Delivery? Uh, so there's a reminder. Yes, we can. You can sign up um, for updates. And so if you were to go to this project website, um, there is a place where you can click on there for updates. And then Brian will be providing his email as well. You can also contact him or any of us really individually if you wanted to reach out and share more thoughts. Um, why is not a circular roundabout at Glacier? Why is it not a circular roundabout at Glacier? Is it's, that? Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Brian. Do you want no, to take I, it or do you want me to? It's, it's just based on the amount of physical space that we have um, at, at the intersection. It's also based on turning movements or um, a turning, the ability for especially larger vehicles to, to make turns and to get enough deflection 
um, for through vehicles. So part of what makes a roundabout so effective at reducing speeds is that it requires you know, horizontal movement of, of a through vehicle and that they have to slow down for, for the yield control. So if they have a conflicting vehicle, but then they also physically have to, to move in space. So to get the deflection that we need in this location, that, that is what has that elongated island. Oh yeah, it's, in terms of why it's not shorter, exactly right. You need to protrude into the lanes. All right, will people be allowed to make a left out of Glacier Hills or need to go right, then a U-turn? I think this is Glacier Hills right here. Yes, they, 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 can, they can make a left there. I think there's another driveway also. If my computer stays up with it, I can see it. I think that's also um, allowed to make a left there. Okay, so you can go across and make a left? Yeah. All right. Um, the issue at Earhart Glacier is most people not abiding the stop sign and getting into the center of the road when they shouldn't. But I guess that limitation will improve the crossing. So that's a comment on that. Um, a question, any plans for a bike lane over the bridge over 23? Crossing that bridge on a bike is unsafe. The, uh, the bridge I know is controlled by MDOT, their right of way. So um, if MDOT does make improvements there, we would certainly wanna work with them to see what can, can be accommodated for safer travel across the bridge. Okay, and then we have comments praise. I'm especially pleased to see the roundabout at Glacier. This will help a lot and remove ambiguity about how cars should navigate the dead zones in the middle of the intersection and who has the right of way there. Also happy to see pedestrian crossing at Kipling. I cross there frequently. Finally, I don't see any problem with adjacent roundabouts at both Glacier and Waldenwood North entrance. There is an adequate space. There is adequate space between the two roundabouts. And I agree, roundabouts at Green Hills will improve traffic flow to from Green Hills and King Schools. I had kids at both. Overall, I'm excited about these improvements. All right, and that's it for the moment. So that might bring us up to the construction and what's happening with that, if you wanna talk about that. Um, the one major thing, I, 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 again, once we go through design and we can re reconvene um, a public meeting to talk about, you know, the final plans and then where we're going into construction, we can talk about that in more detail. But one important thing I do want to uh, mention today, though, about the construction is that our idea is that we'll be working on one half, the east half at it, you know, then the west half, you know, how, however we uh, stage that, so that we will be maintaining throughout next next year, one-way traffic on Earhart Road. So we have vehicles will either be able to move conceptually, the one I've seen is northbound traffic will be maintained, and then we'll be, you know, whatever side we're working on, the traffic will be shifted, you know, uh, accordingly, but we'll maintain traffic in one lane, one way throughout the project, and it will be maintained the same way. We won't be flipping it. That just adds incredible confusion when you try to do something like that. So throughout the spring, summer, fall next year, Earhart will be maintained for travel, but it will be in one direction only until the project is finished. So that's going to be the single biggest impact that folks are going to be seeing on a, on a regular basis out there. Okay, and then we have um, two more, or a comment and a question. Overall, the design looks great. I appreciate the work and I'm really looking forward to seeing this implemented. And the last question is, what is the posted speed limit at Earhart and will this change post-construction? Is it 40 right now? No, 35. No, 30. 35. Sorry. It's been a while since I've looked at it. I think it's 30, or it might be 35. The our anticipation is that we will be evaluating 
the speed limit um, post construction and our hope is to reduce the speed limit. Um, people are saying it's 35. One person <laughs> says speed limit is 35, but people drive 50. Um, and then a comment to reduce three lanes to one lane, especially around roundabouts is a space lost. I am sure that might be um, some better, I'm sure that might be some better way to utilize the space. Overall, it's a great plan and long overdue. Let's see. Um, all right. Will you have a good sign? Will you have good signage on Plymouth and Gettys and green to warn drivers about the construction? Overall, it looks really good. Hope to be able to ride my road bike uh, rather than my mountain bike down Earhart soon. So the question is about signage at, at Plymouth and Gettys and green to warn drivers about the construction. The signage will probably be, or, or the detour will probably be Gettys, Huron Parkway, back um, Plymouth. So th that that area that it will be signed that far back certainly for for the detouring. All right, there are no open questions right now, but I'll wait a few more minutes. Um, 95 questions and comments so far, though. So you really made me work tonight, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank appreciate you so much. You oh, yeah, it's no problem. And I appreciate everyone's engagement and, you know, having this. So I um, just want to say that obviously we'll have the audio of this or this presentation will be available, right? And also the um, the PDF that I've been looking at, we'll make sure that gets posted on the website. So folks can actually just go in and take a look at that at their own leisure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Zoom spits out a report of everything that was written. So we'll have that on hand. And then of course, any anything that was stated is in the um, audio visual recording. Um, one last uh, comment. This is a large improvement. Thank you. My only hesitation is speed control in the south end of the project. Wish there were another roundabout and um, more coming in. There should be construction signage at Plymouth because we get significant traffic from Domino, mm -hmm. Domino's Farms uh, and east of Ann Arbor, Umich. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, when will the end or um, penultimate design be available? I would hope that it's in January that we have that so that we're going out to bid around, you know, planning to go out around that time. So early January would be a, a good guess on that. All right. And then a thank you for the meeting. Thank you. Um, what will be going one lane on each side do during high traffic times? I'm thinking of uh, the U of M hospital traffic that use Earhart to get to the highway. The intersection that is the, the most controlling as far as level of service and delay is, is Glacier and Earhart. And that, you know, we, we ran our analysis um, with pre-pandemic traffic volumes plus the new development volumes. Um, and it's the overall level of service is improved by the roundabout. And then we have a question about the plans for staging construction trucks and equipment, which is basically what are the plans for the staging? Typically they, they will be occupying half of the roadway. It's so, so the other half would be would be available for traffic, um, and if anybody had to put up with you know the what you saw on on Getty's Road, um, it was like it was just last year between between Huron Parkway and uh, and Earhart, you know that was maintained in one direction, um, so vehicles could and that and that. Um, project could continue, you know, outbound going uh, eastbound on that. Um, 
there were there's always delays in construction while a vehicle moves out of your way or is bringing materials in or something like that. Um, but the construction traffic stayed over on the side of the, you know, in, the, in that case, it was the north half of the road for the most part on Gettys, stayed over on the north half of the road and the south half was, was maintained for vehicles to get through. So it would be the same over here where the, all the construction will be focused on one, one half of the road and then the other half is available for, uh, for cars. Okay, great. Um, oh, and somebody noted that they did not get a gov delivery ping for this meeting. So we will need to be sure to do that going yeah, forward. Yeah, we need to, apparently, I, I do apologize. I think there was some confusion in, in the transition that we didn't have a, a gov delivery note for this. So we will make sure for the, for the design review meeting, if you will, that we have the uh, gov delivery sent out. And then um, a comment question, FHWA, which is Federal Highway Administration, says that the road diets work if two-way peak hour volume doesn't exceed 1,750 vehicles per hour. Um, I assume traffic counts on Earhart are well below that. And to be honest with you, I don't have those counts at my fingertips, but as I, I said, we did an analysis of the intersection and the intersection um, should work well. I think it's also important to keep in mind that, you know, this, this section of street leads into one way or one lane um, at either end. So as far as the corridor goes, it, it would still have, um, very similar operations. All right, and Brian, if you don't mind just going over the traffic control one more time during construction, is it one lane in each direction? It, the traffic will be maintained one lane only in one direction. So if it's northbound, then you will be able to get onto Earhart from Gettys and go north and to turn onto any road that you want to turn on to, but you'll only be allowed to go north. Um, the contractor will be working on half of the road, say the west half of the road, so you'll be in the, the easterly lane heading north. Then when he gets he finishes up that side, the northbound traffic will be moved over into the new west lane, and he'll move his operations over to the, to the other side. So we will maintain one lane of traffic in one direction only throughout construction. And it will be always in the same direction, whether it's northbound or southbound, it will always be in that direction. We are not going to flip-flop that. All right. And then our last few comments that have come in is just thanking us for the presentation. Uh, so thank all of you for being such an engaged community and sticking with us on this project. Really? Thank you so much for, for for sitting at your computers tonight and being with us. We appreciate it. All right, I think that's it for now. Um, let's see, what time is it? Um, oh, here's one more question. Hi there, have there been any plans for roundabouts? Um, yes, there has been plans for roundabouts. If you want to just touch on that again briefly um, and maybe show the roundabout on this image. Um, the, the round, the three, again, three roundabouts that are proposed. Um, the first, the, mo the most northerly one is at Glacier Way and Earhart. Um, again, kind of an, an unusual configuration that we had talked about, but it, but it serves the purpose that it needs to serve for the uh, um, for a roundabout, and then the other two roundabouts are at the two so the the, the two Green Hills intersections, Green Hills um, and, and Waldenwood, um, a more of a normal uh, traditional round roundabout at Green Hills, and then the second one just to the south there, um, this one being slightly smaller. But still, it serves the purpose it needs to, to, to make the through traffic deflect 
through the roundabout. Um, and the question following that is, I live in Earhart Village. This would give me three roundabouts to go through. So that's more of a comment than a question. Potentially four if you want to go down to uh, Getty's. Five, six if you're going out to the freeway. And this person doesn't care for that. All right, so no more open questions or comments at this time. I think Brian, Cynthia, and I can stick around maybe for a few minutes more sure. since it's only um, 7.30, so we're ending a little bit early, um, but it looks like we've gone through most everything. Um, oh, here's a question that came in. Great plan, thank you. We'll improve safety options, flow, appreciate the sidewalks, bike lanes, and providing better options for safe returns. Now, if we can just get MDOT to provide a safe crossing at 23 to the north. So more of a comment than a question. Yep. I can bring the PowerPoint back up. That sounds like a good plan. Has there been any thought given to reducing or restricting truck traffic? I think we can take that comment and um, consider that, right, Brian? Yep. And um, then just a, oh, sorry, oh. go ahead. I was just gonna say uh, a couple more images. This is- um, oh, Yes, thank just, you, Cynic. Yeah, you're welcome. I apologize. I meant to, to at least show this one before you got into the role plot, but- um, this is just a, a visual of what the cross section of Earhart and the southern section between Gettys and Green Hills will look, will possibly look like. Um, these smaller trees are the, the new trees that we'll be planting. And then this is a concept for what the northern section would look like. And we have one more of that here that's showing the difference between the two. And these ones are um, unfortunately flip-flopped because this is what the Southern section is. And then we have the overall plan that's here as well, because I think Brian, will, will these slides be up on the website as well? Oh. Yeah, that's, you know, I saw that uh, it, it's not a very clear photo. So hopefully the one I put up there is something that people can look at and, you know, zoom into the detail of it and see it better. We'll have to yeah. make sure that it's, it's a better view. And then here's our next steps. The timeline that we went through, finalizing design in fall and um, the taking the project to bid in winter and then construction next year. And this has my contact information. If anybody certainly wants to send email to me, they, they can. And also my contact information is on the project website, the a2gov.org slash earhart2023. We have just some final comments and a question. Thanks for the info about MDOT controlling the bridge over US 23. Is there any point of contact form to engage MDOT to put more emphasis on pedestrian bike traffic on these facilities? And this person is happy to take the answer offline and left his email. So we can look into that. Um, and then a comment, I think the roundabouts will be helpful and they're easy to use. I am looking forward to the sidewalks, thank you. Um, idea to add to your public comment notes to consider make the dog bone intersection at Ridgemar simpler, more like the Glacier Hills Kipling intersection design since it is secondary, since it is a secondary intersection and does not warrant its own roundabout. Also too much constriction at that location won't be good for emergency vehicles. Oh, 
Oh, and then just to follow up, you don't need to read out this last comment, which I did. Um, all right. And then last comment following that is looks wonderful. Please use solid ballers instead of flex posts. All right. 120 comments and questions. Thank you. How many? 120. Well, I appreciate everybody's input. It's great. Yeah. Again, thank you for being an engaged community. All right, well, I guess we'll just leave the slide up for a moment. So if people wanna write down your uh, email address and phone number, you can do that, as well as the project website. Um, that's where you'll be able to find more information about this as it comes out. And again, all of this information will be available on the, on the website. We'll get, get everything up there. All right, well, there's nothing more rolling in. So I say thank you once again, everyone. And um, again, if you want more information, head to the website. Oh, somebody wrote the uh, comment about the roundabouts uh, being deeply problematic. Um, and again, you're welcome to send in more comments to Brian's email um, and stay posted on what's happening with this project and sign up for the Gov delivery. And we will have a final meeting about the final design. And just a comment, reduce it to a single lane, allocate the other space to bike lanes. Thank you. Somebody wrote a thank you. All right. Well, I think we can probably bring this to a close. Um, again, if you want to reach out to any of us, you're welcome to. Brian's information is up there, as well as the project website. And then a comment came in, we should be reducing speed on Earhart. A single lane would do so. Somebody wrote that they appreciate the clear graphics. That's good for us to know. Thank you. Without permanent bollards, will some people just use the painted area as a passing lane, which is, or this is a comment, without permanent bollards, some people will just use the painted area as a passing lane, which is concerning. But it sounds like we will have some sort of element in there to help prevent that. Yes. All right, well, nothing more is coming in. So I think we can probably bring this meeting to a close. Again, thank you everyone. We really appreciate it. And the conversation is not necessarily closed. Again, you can reach out to Brian if you want to, if a thought hits you after this meeting, which um, sometimes happens, the best thoughts come after the conversation. 
Um, so please reach out um, and then also stay tuned to the project website and we will be putting out more information coming up about the final design. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, okay, well, I'm gonna end the webinar. Um, again, this will be posted up on the project website, so you'll be able to look at it later. So with that, everybody have a good night. Uh, stay warm, it's getting darn cold out there. <laughs> I'm sure many people saw the snow earlier today. Felt a little shocking, but here it is. All right, good night, everyone. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm.